to start with uh, Brad. Okay, so if you look at the uh, report of the book, um, I very little extra to be able to lay out and move around the holiday rounds. Um, we kind of shoveled out for a couple of storms, and that was basically all we did there. Um, we had our New York State DEC inspection here uh, on February 13th. I kind of just want to read it. This is on October 26th, 2012, staff from the department. You guys have not been sharing the own staff price. I'm going to respect the people who are And I know that people are and operating well. The final testimony is that the operator noted that the town of the city is held by the top three of the new market and the county of Ottawa is not held at the point.
Hey, Joey, if you look at the report for the month, um, there was very little activity up the lake other than doing the rounds and holiday rounds. Um, we shoveled after a couple of storms, and that was basically all we did there. Um, we had our New York State DEC inspection over there, um, which was done on February 13th. Um, and I kind of just want to read that to you. This is on October 26, 2012, staff and department. And an announced My name is Sarah Campbell. I'm an attorney with Tiffany Hardy Patel. I represent the plant um, appears to be has about 100 acres up on Farm Road. Well. It is interested in developing about three of those acres for what Tower Zoning regulations call a travel, travel trailer or a camp trailer park. But probably what most of us more commonly know is an RV park. Well, it's pretty basic. Um, his property is currently zoned well, a split zone, you know, like it is zoned a uh, mobile home in the front, and agricultural in the rear. The only part of it is going to be the front, which would be the mobile home, or the mobile home zoning. Um, you have a separate ordinance called the Mobile Home Local Law, which was put out sometime in the, in the 1970s, I think, um, which addresses the approval process for mobile homes, like fixed mobile homes, and also for RVs. Um, However, your zoning There's regulations did not pick that language up, and so there does not like currently control. exist any the town of Sandler that, 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 that RVs are actually permitted. Um, I understand that there are some of the reasons for this issue over the last few years, and um, so Frank is just we're wanting to advance this project. He's already had the project designed by a professional engineer, um, laid out. Um, they um, suck it, the water, um, all the regulations can be easily accommodated on the property that we have. A lot of sizes. Is, uh, He's looking to get in about 20 sites. Um, it is not being covered by nine So I'm just coming to you with an informal matter before we submit a formal application. Is, because I'm sure this is sort of based on my conversation with your attorney for the time. Um, there, there are two ways we could approach it, and I just wanted to get some feedback as to which way might be proper here. So, um, One of the ways is to, to ask you to amend your zoning regulations to allow RV parks in the mobile home district, which is what his property is already zoned. The other would be to create a separate zoning classification or use a different zoning district that you already have. You have what we call a special, um, which also could, could work. And then rezone his property. Well, first, you'd have to allow the uh, RV park in that district and then rezone well, that portion of this property to allow right. that use. The weather's starting um, to break, um, so we are going to be It doesn't really here. matter to I'm us which way you would rather proceed. I think it uh, probably makes sense since your ordinance regarding mobile homes is set up for a combination of mobile homes and RVs to just allow it as a permitted use in the mobile home district that you already have and this property is already zoned. But again, that's, that's something that um, we're hoping that you would discuss amongst yourselves, obviously, and also the church, and it would be lot of work for you. Um, the local law actually has very specific regulations for the approval process once the zoning is in place. Um, it's a planning board review process, essentially. Um, it's pretty lengthy, actually, so it's, it's not that you just say yes and it happens. It, it does have quite a lengthy review process. Similar to site plan review, special permit review that you already have. Um, it's also a uh, renewable license, so it's only good for 18 months. Um, it's required for the applicant to come in every 18 months to renew the license. I think that's a, um, a way to make sure that they're in compliance every 18 months. If there's nothing crazy going on and they've done all the things that they promised they would do. So that's just sort of um, what, what we're here for to raise with you and um, just get your feedback on, on which method you would prefer. We, I don't want to submit a packet of applications and have you say you'd just rather do it the other way. Um, so that, that's it, and I'd, I'd love to hear any feedback that you have. You say you've already communicated with your... Yes. I guess what kind of information did he give you? Well, my question to him was, you know, you have this, you have this, um, this regulation that regulates these issues. 
but it doesn't actually exist in the zoning regulations anywhere. It's a separate local yeah. law. So it's like, what's, you know, where, where in the town are recreational vehicles allowed? His answer was, right now, nowhere. Because the code did not pick up the language from the, it did, it did include the mobile home park, but not the recreational vehicle park. He, he had he indicated to me that there was some conversation with both the planning and zoning board circulating with respect to the topic, um, but ultimately it's you all that make the decision about how to handle it. Um, you know, you have obviously lots of choices. You can do nothing. Um, you could, again, amend your zoning regulations to allow this as a permitted use, subject to review by the planning board in the mobile home district. Um, you, you could, I mean, there's a lot of ways you can handle it. I guess what I'm asking is probably what you'll need to do is have a conversation with Herb yourselves and determine what his preferred method would be. He didn't seem to express a preference when he and I were having the conversation, but he thought it would be a good idea for me to come and just sort of put it out there for you and, and, and let you all think about it. Okay. If, uh, uh, basically, do you have, let's say, the information that you're talking about, do you have it down on paper or something that uh, that you could give the board so that we could look at it? Well, what I, would you like me to email her and let it come through him? Right. Would that be preferable? I, I hate to it. communicate directly with someone else's client. There are rules about that. So um, okay. if you don't mind, I'd rather run it through him. <coughs> and then we would rather that. You did that. Is that a good idea? Yeah. My suggestion would be, again, to just allow it as a permitted use under the mobile in the mobile home district which you already have which for my client would be one her a lot of the way because he's already zoned that way anyways and if you wanted to make it broader and allow it in multiple districts you can also create an overlay district um, in which it's allowed in certain locations but it's just probably the easiest way to go is just allow it in the, in the mobile home park because it's already sort of a similar use um, so I, I don't know if it was just a mistake that it wasn't picked up. I don't know if by saying mobile home in the zoning regulations that people sort of thought at the time that included RVs, but it's clearly different under the separate <laughs> local law. So I'd be happy to just kick it to her and, and let him make a suggestion. I, I think that's the way it should be handled. It, um, there's some information that has been fed, to, uh, I, I guess, with the board. Uh, in reference to something like this, I, I guess um, one of the things that indicated that uh, when these regulations went in, uh, recreation vehicles are, are somewhat different now than they were in those days, mm -hmm. I guess. I guess that's one way of putting it. There's, a, there's some limitations on size, and I don't frankly know enough to know if that still makes sense, mm -hmm. how big they are. You know, there's a, there's a maximum length, I think, and things like that. Yeah. Um, but I know that Frank's engineer designed the site to accommodate the regulations that you have. It probably does make some sense for you to look at them again and see if they make sense anymore. Perhaps your code enforcement officer would be able to take a look and see if they make sense. Given, I know he works in other municipalities, you know, yeah. what, what's sort of out there in terms of what everyone else does. Okay. All right. All right. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate you coming. Yeah. I, I also talked to the code inspector about this and he was basically telling me that in nested in the same words that the legal terms have to be updated and the legal terms are updating is for a campground so what's happening is this is a request for a change of rules to allow for an RV park to be placed there and, you know, I, Herb, why would, I have concern about Herb Klein working on rewriting the rules for a campground when there might be a very legitimate reason that people might, you know, want the current rules as they stand. It might not be an oversight. And I know my father was concerned, or felt, let's say, that if industry comes to the area, the town should benefit. The people in the town should be able to rent out their houses. It should not be, and you know, I'm using a term, a man camp. And I think we should really consider whether we should have Herb Klein changing and rewriting these laws right now. Is that really just 
bringing the laws up to date, or you know, is there a mandate on this? Uh, Herb Klein wouldn't be changing. If I understand that, uh, she would be uh, working with Herb Klein in reference to what Herb Klein either has a desire for or would like to do. Then that information would have to come back to the town. Right, but they and are reading. The, the town would have to have. Uh, I guess we would have to go through processes to study it and look at it. And um, I'm not exactly sure whether that would go to a public hearing or what it would. It would go to a you public hearing. You would have to. Hearing. If you're going to amend the zoning regulations, it would require a public hearing. And so it would go through a process. Herb just wouldn't write up. If that's what you. No, I'm not saying that, but Herb, Herb Klein. Uh, I heard that the t they were saying that the terminology needs to be updated. That That's a very, you know, if, if something isn't permitted right now, there might be a very good reason for it. And that should be looked into. It shouldn't be viewed as that the terminology is archaic. This is a term I have heard from the code inspector for a campground. And we need to update it. That just simply not might might not be the case. Well, I think, I think some of our regulations, period, are so. And Herb Klein writes his law. I'm sorry for interrupting, but Herb Klein represents a lot of towns in this area. Yeah. And I, I'm really concerned about a, a total rewrite of the, the definition of campground and what is permissible for usage of an RV. I'm not sure we have a definition in there for that type of uh, thing. I, I don't think we even have that. Definition. Not not in the zoning regulations. You only do in this document. I'll show you what it looks like because it looks kind of funny. But it's just a little book that you have, and it was adopted in 1979, local law number one. There, there are, are definitions in here. That's but a this lot. This is not in the zoning regulations. That's part of it. Okay. I think it's, it's something that I'm going to have to look at. It, um, <coughs> and there's going to have to be decisions made on to it. it um, Herb's not going to just rewrite the regulations at all. If that's what you're referring to. That's what I'm hearing. That's uh, he's, he's writing, he's working on a draft. No, he's not working on a draft. He's working to put together information that would come to the town through a request by these people here that um, for the town to look at. Okay. And it's going to have to go through process. <coughs> it, um, <coughs> I'm, I'm sure it'll end up with a planning board looking at it. it um, I think probably it'll go through the planning board first. I think that's the way it would go. Uh, and at some point, the, um, the board, the town board, would get involved in it. And I think the public would have an opportunity to, <coughs> excuse me, voice their opinion on it before it gets through. Um, a, se a separate issue? Bluestone Pipeline, I believe when I was reading some of their documentation, they put I believe $100,000 in escrow for uh, road repair. Is, is no. They didn't. Not 100000 How much was it? I'm not saying that my numbers are right. 10000 10000 Okay, that would probably Which be it. Which is in an escrow account that, uh, it's kind of like a rebounding account that uh, the town can write off of that account and when it gets down to one third, and then they replenish it. it um, <coughs> if that's what you're referring to. Yeah. But they also have another account that um, basically, uh, I believe that's 8500 that um, deals in the same way uh, in reference to lawyer or engineer fees. <coughs> if we have to have a uh, an engineer, for example, on a uh, driveway or something like 
contact, and that works basically the same same way. Okay. Okay. Are you still enforcing your re resolution on uh, those talking about natural gas development? We haven't done anything yet. Well, you passed a resolution saying you had to submit in writing. That at this point, that's still still the same. Um, could I ask if there if you're in talks about any pipelines, new pipelines besides Constitution and Bluestone? Have we got any thoughts? Yeah, any talk. Has, uh, have any in companies like have uh, Laser approached you? No, Laser is in Windsor. Right. Um, and I, uh, they built the line, but I think uh, that was sold. Uh, to, uh, to Williams. Yeah. Williams. Yeah. Cabot Oil, I believe. But, um, now, Laser... Laser has not contacted the town of Sample in any way that I know of. Okay. Okay. Constitution is very active right now. I hear. There's been a couple of meetings. It, uh, there was one at the theater that we, the board, uh, wanted to make sure that they were open with the people in the town of Sanford and asked them to have a meeting and uh, they were supposed to invite everybody that was on that 600 foot, I guess you would say right away, proposed right away, <coughs> to come to that meeting so that they could try to understand what they're doing. Okay. Okay. Hi. Public part of the meeting, can I say something? Yes, you can. Go up Pizzelli Road today, and they're about a thousand feet on Pizzelli Road in really bad shape. And going up Schoolhouse Road, they're probably about 700 feet on Schoolhouse Road, they're in bad shape. So, well, presumably, as a work, a result of the work on the pipeline, they'll have to be fixed up sometime. So. Yes, we had a meeting today here with. Blue stone, and it was in reference to exactly that. Um, the roads are getting beat up very bad, and uh, the town is very concerned about it. And um, there, this meeting was just to do with with that issue. But, uh, some of the places that with this kind of weather and everything, and the heavy equipment is it's tearing things up, and. Uh, the highway superintendent has been right on top of it, <coughs> it uh, and um, I believe we got things pretty well settled today to make sure that uh, those roads are maintained good enough for traffic to come over. It, it's, it's very difficult though. Yeah. It, um, it's, with this weather, it's uh, almost sometimes the more you work it, the worse it gets. <laughs> But the highway, the highway superintendent and the, is, is right on top of that. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Any other questions? I got one, but I don't want to voice it because you said I have to submit it in writing. It's about the gas, natural gas. So I'll be back at the next meeting. I will submit you a letter in writing of the question I would like to ask. Okay, you're welcome. Anybody <laughs> else? <clears throat> okay, I'll close the public hearing. <clears throat> Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, it was, all right, you're, okay, right, you help them out? Yeah. Okay, that's why it's stuck in my head.
there's a correction that needs to be made in the minutes regarding the floodplain development permit and building permit fee schedule.
basically what the permit was, how much the yeah. permit yeah, was I, for. I, I, yeah, I have that. I have that. Uh, yeah. Each permit I issue, I yeah. record it. But I can, I can do that sometime. Good. Good. Yeah. Okay. That's it. Very simple. <coughs> Very good. No questions. Any questions? I see the. Uh, I'm looking at the planning board here. Approval recommended for the uh, new pole barn on Tarva Hill. Yeah, uh, there, there uh, this gentleman behind me was talking about uh, clarification of some some stuff. Uh, I'd actually been in contact with the zoning board chairman about uh, site plan review. Uh, a bunch of towns, about other towns, have upgraded site plan review and. Not to get on that subject, but campers is one of the questions not only here, it's everywhere because the definitions of campers are different today than were in 1979. And that was explained. Uh, there is nothing in the works. It's simply requested a copy of site plan review that we did in Hancock, which was done by Shepstone Associates that does uh, site plan for everybody and should make a bunch of this stuff easier. Um, we, uh, the building that uh, Kevin was talking about was a replacement building. He was concerned about the uh, distancing from the property lines, which is spelled out pretty clearly in, in the, what section do we have. But the road front, or the distance from the road isn't. And that's something at some point uh, JD and, and uh, I will have to discuss as far as right away with most roads. I'm sure your roads are the same way, aren't defined. They're pretty much roads that have been there forever. And there's no like 17 of them, uh, certain right away with. But that particular building, they wanted to put it closer to the road, and I can't make that determination. So I sent it to Carl and uh, Turned out that there was a building there previously and replacing the building and they could put it back where they wanted to, but the, the homeowner decided he wanted it back farther so he could access the building where the vehicle would not be back and onto the road getting out of it. So it, it we're kind of feeling our way through this trying to work with what's there and uh, you know me working with the planning board and Understand what they want to, yeah, and mm -hmm. where it needs to go from planning. That sounds like and, a good idea. And, and it's, it's working pretty well. It's working pretty well. Yeah. I would uh, much rather do it by email, but we'll end up doing that later on in the year to get that situated. I, uh, of course, it's kind of early, but uh, <clears throat> if people coming in or there any concerns about changing in the fees and everything no. so far? No. Okay. No. Uh, but uh, the, uh, the phone communication, the ability to get me at any time, seems to be working out well. Um, I mean, I still need to spend my time in the office, obviously, but it's uh, more beneficial if I'm not doing what I'm supposed to be doing this back in the long run. But that, that, I know you were concerned about the regular office hour. Yeah. But uh, just for instance, this house on Blueberry Lake, uh, I was here Thursday. As soon as I left here, the guy called me and said, when can I meet you? Yeah. Friday morning. So it was in the next morning instead of the following Monday or Wednesday, whenever I would have got here, when it was a snow or ice storm or something. So it, it, it works out. Okay. And I don't mind to say it's easier for me because if you ask me something today and I don't happen to write it down, the next time it comes up is when you ask me again. Sorry about that, but that just happens. <laughs> <laughs> All right. But we did that communication back and forth and uh, working through this. Okay. Yeah, got it pretty well figured out, I think. Good. Any questions? Thank you. No problem. No problem. <coughs> Thank <laughs> you.
speed a little bit, we had to order some new signs. I've ordered them through bases, so on and so forth. They're all in. We, as you out there riding around, you'll be seeing them. We'll be putting them use there. Uh, I have started a monthly tailgate safety training program with our employees with the highway department. Uh, this last month, our topic was uh, new road work signs, proper placement of the signs, and use of them. <coughs> On uh, Tuesday, April 9th, uh, the highway department will be attending a safety training in Walton at the fire station for the village of deposit. And uh, we will be covering the following topics. Uh, sexual harassment, workplace violence, hazardous communication, MSDS, excuse me, MSDA sheets, uh, right to know, uh, center basically the MSDS sheets, and uh, the blood border pathogens will be covered at this training. And this training is going to be put on uh, at no charge to the town. Just our time and fuel to get there. Uh, winter months here, you know, it's been quite nasty out in our uh, time we've had. The shop has been completely repainted on the inside. Uh, when we have been doing snow removal, Weather's permitted us. We've been out doing a lot of brush cutting on the roadways. We've had all, all the brand new LED exit signs installed throughout the shop. Uh, the ones with the main entrance and exit doors that we've had replaced uh, back a few months ago, they also have emergency lighting built into the systems for backup. Uh, we also installed uh, new fire extinguisher signs throughout the shop after it's going to be painted. Uh, I had a representative over to the garage and enter path representing NYSEG for an energy audit study. And I have some handouts for you guys here from the company itself. Just going to pass them around.
basically what this uh, audit here, how it's been explained to me, is what they're proposing to do for the township, they will be saving the town approximately $1,733.73 a year by per participating in this program. They're saying this is a 45% uh, savings and $8,669 over the next five years. They're estimating the payback time on this system and here, as you can see, is 14.9 months. <coughs> Uh, the front page here, you got to see the price here, but we cannot use this due to the, the reason we are a municipality that we pay prevailing wage. So the second sheet, if you go to it, it's going to show you the prevailing wage total. Um, at the very bottom, there's a balance due. If we were to go with this route with these people, they want to replace a quantity of about, I recall it here, it looks to be 94 lights and fixtures here they want to replace throughout the shop. Basically what they want to do is uh, they want to install some LEDs and some fluorescent lights, which is a smaller, take less energy, and supposed to last a lot longer. You would ask me, uh, I guess they called the town clerk here, and asked me to have these guys come in and see what they can do for the township. So this is the findings they have found for us. If it's something you guys are interested in doing in the future, I have no idea. There's something with the garage over there. But the prevailing wage, unfortunately, is what kills the whole deal. Um, you're looking at a balance. If we were to do this whole project through this company here, with nice site covering, uh, this nice site is going to be covering 70% of the deals you can read on the front page. And the total cost for the town after them covering it would be $4,170.66. If you guys would replace all the lights around the whole drive. I know other companies that have used this program. And it, is, it isn't a bad idea, it really isn't, but they're saying an uh, estimated payback 14.9 months. That's not a regular wage, is it? That is at the regular wage, so you need to figure it's going to be double that. For some reason, if you look at the front sheet, uh, if we were to have to pay the prevailing wage, we're talking $2,156.62. Now, if you go to the prevailing wage, you're at $4,170.66. So it's about $2,000 difference due to the prevailing wage. Now, us being municipal, so that their contractors are going to do this. We don't make a contract. No, they they do all this themselves. They do this themselves. You have this energy path here. Uh, this Jeff Zembeck that come in and told us about this nice site, representing nice site here. He's the one they said they had the contract just come and do it all, and then they dispose of all the bulbs themselves. All the yeah. stuff. I've been involved. I mean, they said contract for that. Lamp lighters is who I've seen doing it for them. Yeah, I'm not too sure who it is. Uh, it is a quality, it's an improvement in the lighting. The new fluorescent lighting is, I'm sure you're Very right. bright. It's very bright, it's, it's good. It's not a bad idea. It's just how much dollars do you want to spend and how long do you want to wait to get back? Basically, it's not a bad idea. I no other companies have done it, and it's worked well. And they're quick. They come in, they come in with about five, six guys, and they make it out very quick. I know our garage budget has been cut a little bit this year, so I'm not sure where we're going to stand at that. But that's, like I said, it's going to be put up to you guys what you guys want to do with that. Uh, like I said, now if you were, <coughs> it says we estimate that you could save $1,733.73 a year, so even though they're saying uh, it's going to take us 14.9 months to recover this, we're basically going to be looking at probably 26 months for a full to recovery. Due to the profound of wage here. But you will have better lighting. There will be a lot better lighting, definitely. That'd be a lot better. <coughs> New for us, there's much better we do, lighting. We do have quite a few lights out front of the shop uh, for a mechanic. We don't have any lights for this, but there's some uh, balances over there. Uh, or bad, you know, we don't have any lights throughout the center of the public for now.
I mean, do we want to look in before we do something like this? Do we want to look into maybe replacing some of the stores some metal alloys so we can see a little bit better, maybe to really brighten things up? So what that cost is, I don't know. It's well, it's your job. Well, it's ultimately this decision is going to come down to you guys. Uh, if you guys want to go with this system or you want to go with something different. But in the future, we do need to look at some kind of lightings or some balances over there that are bad. So it's something we're going to have to take a close look at here soon. I'm just thinking for $4,000, maybe we could look at maybe some metal halide lighting that might even be brighter and better. Right. Well, that's why I'm saying this is you guys were you want to take it. I, I was just asked to do their, uh, since they called the down work, which we'd like to do some study on us. I haven't talked to them half day with them. How, how would you go about checking the other one? Price-wise, you mean? To no. How to, how to compare? You would almost have to get a contractor in there to give you a quote on, I would, I would guess, metal allies. And uh, replacing the fluorescence. And see how that compares against the $44,170 you can spend there. There's still a paper about the wage if we get a contractor to choose. Unless you get a contractor to work for one. Right. Do have a contractor that does work for one. You get a doctor to It's just a thought, you know, before you go out and spend $4,000 on a new fluorescent, which is good lighting. But we might want to look at something else. Mm -hmm. I can just say maybe Tony yeah. could do something like this. Well, he wouldn't do this. Uh, he could do this, but it costs more about yeah, Because they're paying 30%. Yeah. Right, rather than 30%. I'm just thinking if you want to do this, do we want to look at all options? And do we want to stick with fluorescent red lighting? Or you're the guys who got to work in the garage, so you guys decide what you want. Or do you want to maybe look at metal halides or something like that? Well, I want to make it the best for the township you know, in all aspects, you know, financially, first of all. And if we want to make sure it's the safest home we live in itself, we wouldn't have to be prevailing way to have the train be But what we're saying now, David, <coughs> is we don't pay the prevailing wage at that aspect, like the cost of the system itself or the units that it may cost is what we keep looking at the whole thing. If we had Toby do this, we're going to pay a lot more yeah. because they're going to pay a large percentage of this. Mm -hmm. I'm just thinking, if we're going to spend four thousand one hundred seventy dollars, do we want to look at? Do you guys want to look at any other options? Is there a lighting that you think might be better? For? I'm not too familiar with the lighting. To tell you the truth, out there, what's available? You know, I've been out of it for years myself. I'm not too sure what's really out there, honestly. Um, so, I'm free for suggestions. Okay, are you suggesting then that, uh, that, for example, Oxford? I would talk to an electric contractor maybe and just get a feel for it and say, this you know, this is what we're considering doing. Do you have another idea that you think might work better for us? And if you do, present us with a quote on how you want to what you think we should do here, okay. provide that the light. And it, it might come in I doubt it'll come in cheaper, but at least we took that opportunity to, to see what's available. Okay. Okay. So why don't we do this? Why don't we table until next month? And I will check with, for instance, Kobe or something to see what there's other options are out there. Does that sound fair? That sounds good. Sounds good. Okay. Alright. Next thing we have to do. Uh, we need to uh, award the bid for the new 10 wheeler truck. So what we do. They put two bids in, as you guys recall. I have them here. The first bid that they come in with uh, 
was a price of $193,347. The warranty package would be $4,703.40, which would make a total of $198,050.40. But uh, the snow plow equipment does not meet our specs. It's too light of equipment. We expect it out with a I beam of 8 inches in the front, 10 inches in the rear, and had 6 inch high beams in the front, 6 inch in the rear, so it did not meet specs. And uh, with the heavy equipment that we're running these days, I really don't feel that we should be trying to save a couple dollars and go under what our specs are. So that's the first one. Second one is from Stadium International again. All right. Uh, we're looking at a total of truck price there of $196,928. The warranty package, as you can see, would be the same of $4,703.40, which makes the total of this truck $201,631.40. Uh, I'm going to recommend this to the board for the simple reason. Uh, this is what was uh, recommended going to and in which meets and exceeds what we ask in our specs. So at this point, that's what I'm going to recommend to you. Bird truck, they come in with a truck price of $194,957. The warranty package they offered for us was $9,662. As you can see in my notes here, the rear suspension on there does not meet our specs in that truck there that they built. Uh, we asked for a Chalmers suspension under that, and they altered us a three-leaf T-ride suspension. Tracy's Road Equipment, uh, the truck price was $201,921. The warranty package was $2,300, which would make the total of $204,221. And their engine into the bid specs did not meet. It was too small of an engine they put in the truck. So I'm going to recommend to you guys uh, the going with Stadium International at $201,631.40. I don't know what your guys' feelings are with it, but after I read through it, I spoke to Tracy's about it, and they said, yeah, we do realize that we did a little smaller engine. We tried to save a little. You know, same with uh, Stadium International, they put two different plow equipment packages out there, two different vendors. I spoke to the one vendor, he says, well, you know, we're trying to be competitive and that's what we have to do. So it's unfortunate they couldn't beat the specs. In Bird Truck, I did speak to the gentleman there, over there, and they told us they feel the trucks do ride better, their top style truck rides better with that suspension under it. I guess the one, um, I the warranty package are basically all warranties similar. They're basically all extended these warranties out on these trucks. For the most part, of, we'll use international here for you. The warranty is going to be an option of, for a five-year, hundred thousand mile, or five thousand four hundred hour comprehensive engine warranty. And uh, for the vehicle itself, we're going to add a five-year, one hundred mile to the truck itself it would be for Stadium International. And if you go into the other trucks, they're basically the same deal. Um, Bird, as you notice, their warranty was quite a bit more. But they have multiple things here. For instance, uh, they have an extended premium heavy duty 24 month, 60,000, 24 month to 60 month, 250,000. Uh, this is premium heavy duty for 2197. Then they have, uh, for their engine, it's a $4,650. And then there's some emissions here uh, for sensors and so on and so forth. There's a charge for 700. Then there's some more uh, for hard wiring harnesses, for instance, here, there's a $400 charge. And now they're gonna charge another 1,400 just for the transmission itself. And uh, a, staller, a starter and alternator package uh, for a warranty they want charge another $315. So if you look at, you know, this engine, the whole complete engine gear deal from Stadium, they're asking for $2,400. Uh, 
And you got to add all these 400 to 1400 to 13, uh, the, the 350. And then you've got to go ahead and add into the 2197, which exceeds way over that. And by taking both warranty packages through the Stadium International, they're also giving you a 10% discount for adding them both together. Because technically they would be like over 5000 for the warranty package. If you take both, they take 10% off. Okay. Very good. I like the idea of it. There's one with about one there. It's not too bad. Yeah. 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 I'll make a motion to approve the uh, Stadium International Truck for $1,631.40. Second hand motion. Second. 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 I need to ask permission to uh, put out the bid for the following horse aggregate, fine aggregate, gasoline, uh, blend of diesel, kerosene, fuels. That's one. Go for it. Second. Oh, second. Second. So you. It kind of makes it better, uh, especially on this aggregate, everything a little more simple, like. You know, so the trucking, the well, trucking and stuff like that. And we always seem like we have to table it till the next meeting to get trucking bids. And well, there's a lot of times you've got to put trucking bids out separately for some reason. You don't know who's even going to bid on this. You know, yeah, that's true. Yeah. You don't know. You know, some of these companies don't <coughs> offer trucking. You know, that's the selling material. They just have stockpiles. So what you need to do is get your aggregates, put them up to bid. Then the following month we bring that back to here. And then all of a sudden now we know John Doe, no matter bid on this, will say to our trucking companies, listen, we have Cold Steel Stone, Stone, Shaper Enterprise Stone, Barrett Blacktop, or whatever. I need a bid from you guys. What is it you guys going to charge us to go pick this up per ton and bring it back to deposit for us? So that's why we got it. And then next month we'll put the trucking company. <coughs> it is complicated, but I don't know. Well, one thing, you know, you know, there's been a discrepancy sometimes when they, they price it out, so I do it by ton, and I'll do it by, by the yard. So there's a difference there, you know. Right, yardage and tons, I know you guys running that problem last year. Right. See if we can't. Let's see, there was a... <coughs> Motion is second, that's been passed. Okay. <coughs> All right, uh, I have met with uh, Bluestone DTE today on uh, the road conditions we're having out there. We've had a lot of complaints, I have personally, and uh, we got a meeting today, I down meeting with these people, and I told them basically where the town is, stands right now with them. Uh, they need to start becoming more compliant with the town itself, you know, for our traveling public out here. It's not fair to us town residents to have to drive over the roads that somebody else has destroyed, and we had a long discussion about that today. They will have answers tomorrow, hopefully by 2 o'clock. All right, I will be taking a class myself uh, on March 16th for a boot camp at Woodcock and Garrett, and will charge the township. You guys all All right. Um, I know we spoke there last month. We still need to look at a way to dispose of a lot of the paperwork safely. It's got a lot of social security numbers. I don't know if anybody can find any more information about that. The only thing we had was that I brought some stuff back from Taylor last month about it. I know we spoke to that credit company. I don't know what you guys want to do, but I know it's something we need to do soon. Whether, like I said, we get a secure box for the justice room or for the building here itself, I can bring things over to run for the shredder or dump in the box and so they come to shred it or whatever. But, you know, I got a box on my floor right now and I don't feel comfortable being in my office with the social security numbers on there, driver's license, a lot of information that people shouldn't have access to. It's way from. Um, 
by any chance did you look into what what it would cost for a shredder that we do on our own shredder? A shredder, uh, a small little one that would take 12 sheets, heavy duty was 199 for a little thing. And it's like this. But like I said, I'm not too sure if you guys are looking to do possibly the whole municipal building, you know, for the justice and everything, or you want to buy all these little things. Or The only good thing about having these commercial companies come in, you got documentation stating they were here and it's been disposed of properly. You know, uh, I could run anything through a shredder and have it shredded. That's the main thing right there. You would have documentation stating they were here and they disposed of it properly. I think we were looking at possibly instead of a month, by the month we were looking Maybe at. Maybe every two months or something. Two or three months, by any chance. Uh, did you get anything? No. Information on that? I haven't got any information on that. All I do is. Do you still have a contract to give you two shredders or do you can put it back in the file you had it? You keep going with the P for it. Okay. Yeah. Do they come up with it? <laughs> Alright, the next thing on my uh, <coughs> list of stuff here. I've got a letter from Brook County Department of Public Works, uh, Division of Solid Waste Management. Basically, a uh, cleanup day. Uh, <coughs> the county will no longer take tires for free, so if we do uh, want to have to see this for our town of Sanford residents, we will know we will have to pay for this not only for the trucking, we will have to pay a tipping fee for this kind of service. So we usually do this on a cleanup day. Uh, in the past practices, we worked with the village deposit. The town of Sanford had two containers and the village deposit had one container for tires. Um, what has happened, I guess, last year, basically they filled two full containers full tires, and they had almost an empty bit on the third one, there was only a few tires into it. So, with that being said, our, our fee that we paid for the trucking last year was $702. I'm not sure what it would be this year from Bird Adams for the dumpsters themselves. That wasn't a tipping fee or nothing, that was just are trucking for the tires. I have called around. I spoke to Mr. Eddie Caton. He has quoted me uh, for a 30-yard container of $165 just, just for the use of the container and the trucking to the landfill. Uh, Wright Sanitation quoted me $175 for a 20-yard bin. That's for the trucking again, not the tipping fees. Uh, with a 30-yard bin, it could hold approximately 200 tires, and Mr. Caton has uh, said approximately 4 tons is what 200 tires would weigh. Uh, he said about $785 for the one bin to be filled up, chucked to the landfill, that's including tipping fees, if we're to use 4 ton as a number. But his trucking fee is $165. And it would be $155 per ton per tipping. So if it was three ton, you'd pay three times 155 if we decided to go with that route. Um, if we did not do that specific thing this year, I feel maybe the town may end up seeing a lot more tires over the bank, on the back roads, so on and so forth. Uh, I don't know how you guys feel if you just want to to up uh, because there's a lot of white goods and things that we do usually get rid of for the community also. Or do you guys want to keep it in place and pay the tipping fees <coughs> for this tire deal? Uh, the village deposit is basically going to follow what we do. So if we can decide maybe tonight what we want to do, I can let Brad know in the morning so he can get back to his people <coughs> And if we well, did do it... Do you have a total there of what, in other words, the tipping fee and the... Uh, uh, dumpster? Dumpster. It would probably be approximately <coughs> one dumpster loaded, and trucking and tipping fees is $785. That's for one dumpster approximately four ton, approximately 200 <coughs> car tires. That's car tires we're talking. We're going to put 200 tractor trailer tires in that dumpster, that's for sure. 
you know. So it, basically, what we're looking at is, is roughly eight hundred dollars per dumpster. It, um, <coughs> um, before we were spending seven hundred and two dollars is what we paid last year for trucking at Bird Adams. But that was for two. That was for two, and we only filled really one in the village. Filled one. Uh, we can have, like I said, we can discuss this. Basically, if you guys wanted to limit just to car tires, on fact, trailer tires, maybe, if we want to continue the service, so you don't see these all over the bank, uh, and it could not be. I would, I would recommend just keeping it to residential. Did I hear you say no commercial? There was no commercial mm -hmm. last year. I know we won't have anything budgeted for this, but uh, last year we did take it out of over out of our project now. I'm pretty sure it's our plan. I, I guess if I'm, in my thinking is that basically what we're looking at compared to last year with uh, if we got one dumpster, for example, <coughs> uh, basically the town would be coming up with like four hundred dollars. Difference compared to what it was. A hundred dollars. Yeah. Let's see, it's a hundred and fifty ton. So like one fifty five per ton. Okay. So it'd be you know I guess the board has to make up their mind whether the benefit is worth that. I think um I, I guess that um we're only talking between five and six hundred dollars, correct? Excuse me? Between five and six hundred dollars difference is basically compared to what we were last year. I think it's a worthwhile well, program. Me too. We're actually talking if we just limit the town to one dumpster instead of two dumpsters, you're talking a hundred dollars. Okay. Actually eighty three dollars difference on average. Mm -hmm. If we just limit it to one dumpster. Did we fill more than one last year? They had a total of two filled, and they had a very small amount in the third one. Brad said he didn't need to fill the third one. The one that was the village, and one Well, that's the way it worked last year. Uh, the village, I believe, is going to wait until we yeah. make up our mind what they're going to do. Right. They're not making a decision to, the board here makes a decision what they want to do for the town of Sanford. They wanted to follow what we do, because, you know, everything's usually done it in our parking lot over there. Okay, so if we went with one, and they work. went with one. Right. And if we have more tires than that, we're... <laughs> it's, it's always hard to come out even. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's a guessing game, it really is. You pay so much, it's $250 <coughs> or $155 a time. It, it is something that... Uh, I think it is a good, good program. It doesn't basically get rid of the tires and not over the bank. But, um, well, what's the board, how the board feel about that? I think that's a good idea. We'll get one and let them get the other. And I'm in favor of the program. Yeah. Okay. So we end up with more than two dumpsters worth. Do we want to have some contingency in there to uh, further? Or do we have a bunch of stuff? This is just for her. Uh, he told, Ed Caton told me you can have another one there if you like it there, and we do not have to use it. And he would not charge it. So. Okay, now that's your answer. Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, that's if you guys decide to go with Mr. Caton. Well, at his price, for a 30 yard dumpster, it's $165. Rights for a 20 yard bin was $175. He is cheaper and it's a bigger dumpster. So. Oh, that, sounds good. that sounds good. Were they 30 yards last year? Remember? 20, 30 yards? They were 40 yards. 40 yards. Mm -hmm. 40, yeah. Do we need a motion on this or to. Yeah, we need a roll down here. Yeah. I'll make a motion. We go ahead with the program. I'll second. 
for any kids. And I'm going to go with education then. Yep. And I will get this paperwork back to the county and we'll get a couple dates. Uh, I'll be here with Brad, if you guys don't mind, and coordinate with him maybe. Yep. With the village to see what works for them. Mm -hmm. Maybe we can coordinate everything so it works and works for us, if you guys don't mind. Now this is just for regular tires? This is for regular car tires. But no, no cup tires. I would recommend that we can take cup tires, but that's quite a few guys. With no pressure. Now you would be setting up uh, as far as white goods? White yeah. goods, if you guys wanted to do the same thing as we've done in, uh, last year, uh, it seemed to work out pretty well, unless you guys want to take a different route with it. What has happened last year is Mr. Caton has brought a dumpster in, he brought a skid steer in, and he paid his own man out of his own pocket. In return for the white goods for the scrap model, he took it away for nothing, and he paid his own help to do the truck. Okay. Would you like a roll call vote on that? Yes. Yeah. Do we need Decker? Aye. David O. Martin? Aye. R. Gordon Tyler? Aye. David K. Aye. Kevin J. Aye. Okay. Next up. I did not find that shred of paperwork. I thought we laid it on the table here and I'm not sure what happened, but I have this business card I can make on contact. Okay. Uh, I spoke with a, Ed Honor uh, from Economy Paving, and he told me uh, the bridge over on Milk Street was supposed to be closed here starting Monday, uh, March 18th. But this would not be happening at this time due to asbestos reasons, with the paint or whatever may be with that bridge. And he felt it'd be a big inconvenience to the town people here to shut it down just to shut it down. So what he's going to do once they get this asbestos problem solved is he's going to try to give me at least one week notice uh, prior to closing the bridge. It probably will be done very soon, he said. So I will not be able to get back to another meeting by next month and tell you it's going to be closed at this date. So as soon as I hear, what I will do is I'll write something up here and I'll put it in your mailboxes here or I'll be in contact with you let you know when the bridge will be closed. Is this the closing code? They're going to redo the bridge? This is going to be the total reconstruction of the bridge over by, on Mill Street, going over 17. And they're going to notify you with a week's notice, maybe? He's going to try to give you a week if he can. This way, possibly, if we could put it in the paper, I'll get a hold of Deb. Yes. You know, Sorry. and. Sorry. Yeah, Sorry. Everybody, Sorry. yeah, everybody, yeah. So, like I said, as soon as I hear officially it's going to happen, I can contact you. Maybe put it in the paper for us. Thanks. Or whatever. Yeah. But, like I said, I heard that it was supposed to, they never even called me, I just heard rumor all those bridges closing, so I went to the source itself on what's going on here, and he says, well, Kendall, it was supposed to. So I give him all my contact information, he'll get back to me, he told me. So, that's what's happening there. Okay, the next thing. All right, we have the town of Sanford has been approved for a, a Federal Army Surplus, or OGS, what they call it, program. Uh, I've talked with a couple different townships in the area. I've talked to the town of Masonville. I've talked to the town of Windsor and asked them about the program a little bit. And there's a lot of uh, different things out there that you can get for the townships. Uh, I didn't do it just specifically for the highway. I've done it for the whole town of Sanford. So whether it's something the Venezuela building here can use, possibly a generator in the future if they have one, or for the use of the highways, uh, for an example, if they have a pickup truck or something, we may be able to get that basically dirt cheap and uh, put it in use. The only stipulation with their stuff is you need to keep it in use for 18 months. Now, is this something that you're going to be wanting in your file? Is that, should that be? Is this the OGS, the surplus? You need to keep this. With Alice in here, I made a copy for my office also. This is the original. This because it's like I said, it's just not highway. It's the township itself. So I feel this ought to be left at the town clerk's office. That's just a letter approving us with our numbers on it. Next thing is there's a letter. I don't know if you guys have received it from Gerald Knapp, 175 Schoolhouse Road. In regards to a lot of stones and rocks throughout his lawn. Uh, what has happened there is there was blacktop up there and they made a temporary fix with pressure run which did not hold and they went capped again with different stones, ones and twos. 
And unfortunately, the weather we've been having, we got to plow our roads, so the roads need to be opened up, and a lot of that stuff come off the plow and it doesn't want. He was upset about it a little bit. I went up and talked to him. I actually met with a lady by the name of Martha from Bluestone, met with her up there, took numerous pictures. I took her up on a tour, showed her what was going on. I set it up one day to have them go out and clean the lawn for them. They were kind of concerned about having the lawn done right now because we get more snow, what's going to happen again? Totally understandable. I expressed my concerns to Mr. Knapp that uh, I felt they ought to be doing, get the bulk of the lawn right now so it doesn't really kill us like grass. Uh, but then again, I guess it's, he was gone one day and they went there to clean it up one day and the wife came out and asked him not to clean it because she thought it was going to happen again. I explained to them for the simple reason they might be here today, gone tomorrow, you know, you know back 20 years ago, everybody did everything on a handshake, no problem, we're all good. Today's day and age, if you don't do put things in black and white, it may not happen. So I did give him Martha's, which is the landowner's right away person's phone number, direct contact, email, and office number. I said, you need to get a contract, whether you get somebody in here to clean up, whatever, get something writing from these people that they're going to carry your property for you. So you guys know where we are with that. Mr. Knapp said he would take care of that at that point. So. And the last thing here, which we already discussed, uh, was I've had multiple complaints about the roads out there, with the pipeline going through. And we had that meeting today, and hopefully things will be resolved by 2 o'clock tomorrow. Anything else? Sorry, took so long, but anything for me? Okay. We used to tell Bob he wasn't going to get another chance. Sorry, Bob. <laughs> Tell me that all the time, dude. When you're done, you're done. What do you think? Clerk. We received a thank you card from Bonnie Barnes regarding the grant there. We also received a thank you card from the Historical Society for the donation. We received a letter. Um, of information from George Shirky, the ZBA chairman, in reference to the mobile home local law. And we received another letter from George Shirky, the ZBA chairman, um, stating Gerald Knapp advised me that he would like to diminish his involvement with the ZBA. He wants to continue to be involved. He would like to move from regular member status to alternate member status. I support this request. And John Alfano has been serving as an alternate member of the ZBA. He would like to become a regular member. I support <coughs> this request. Please take appropriate action to make these requests request changes. <coughs> it's, uh, that's something the board needs to act on. It, uh, I'll, I'll make a motion to this point down here full time member. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Thank you. Do we need to act on moving to an alternate or anything? Or is that just that, that? That's what we just did. Okay. Yeah. The town also received a letter from the Deposit Events Committee. The IT proposal. I can update you on the IT proposal. That was on the computer networking that we looked at last month. The bid that I got from Computer Emergency Room. Uh, due to our procurement policy, because of the cost, we need to get two bids. I've been in touch with Blue Storm Technologies. Unfortunately, I won't have a bid until tomorrow on that. Uh, <coughs> So I will have two bids that I will present to you before this month's meeting so that we can review it. If it's something you want to act on sooner, uh, we can. And I've also completed the grant application to Constitution Pipeline. It has been submitted to be reimbursed for this IT upgrade if we get approved. 
Uh, and I have spoke with the woman, we can act on this now, we can take the money, we can do our IT upgrade. If we are awarded the grant, they would still give it to us to reimburse us. So we don't have to wait until June 15th when the grant awards come out to decide, okay, we're going to do it now. If we feel that we need to do this sooner, which I feel we do, we can act on it, go ahead and get our IT upgrade done here. If we award the grant, so be it. If not, we're paying. Um, <clears throat> as far as the grant uh, to the Constitution, uh, as you said, you have more than one. I've only done one grant application. They have to be done online. Okay. I did that online for the town of Sanford for this IT upgrade. Uh, I will be in touch probably tomorrow with the woman about all the grant applications coming in to show our letter of support for all the grants that have been coming in and discuss that with her. I know we've had requests to write a few letters of support for different grants that have come to us. But yeah, we will be writing a universal one for all the grants that have come in to show support. Okay. <clears throat> How many do you have? Uh, I believe we've got about nine. Ooh. Yeah. Now, you have them listed? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I'll bring that to you before I... Well, let's see, it's got to be done before the 15th, right? Yep. Yeah. I just spoke with the uh, fire department yesterday to... What I needed to get really was the name of their grant. I need to know... You know, as a fire department, are they getting new turnout gear or are they getting new air packs? I need to know what it was for so that I can prioritize in our list what we're supporting. You know, okay. Uh, same with Wilson's Children's Center, what their upgrade is going to be, what they're trying to accomplish. I couldn't just put Wilson's Children's Center and feel that that was sufficient. I wanted to know exactly what they were putting a grant for so that our letter looked like we were on top of things. Okay. I should. I have that letter already drawn up. Uh, I just have one more person to wait for a phone call back for the name of the grant so I can handle it. Other than that, the letter's all drawn. I've got it ready to go. I was going to bring it to you tomorrow or something. Great. Yeah. But our, our grant is done online and has been submitted. Okay. So. Was there anything else that you requested in, in, for the grant for the town of Sanford itself besides just IT updates? That would be a complete new grant we would have to do. Uh, not the world's top grant writer, but I gave it a good shot. I just asked. <laughs> no one has approached me with any other grants for the town of Sanford. Uh, I'm personally, I'm hoping that these grants that are out there, the movie theater, the Wilson Children's Center, and Booster Club, and all these people that have applied, that's where I'm hoping Constitution really helps us out as far as. The grants go. The town of Sanford did submit one for our IT upgrade. I completed that last night and submitted it. Very good. <clears throat> so you're right on top of it. Well, it's good to get. You got almost a couple days left. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not doing another one. <laughs> very, very good, Kevin. That's one of the couple of things that I had down here. Well, but, um, I couldn't really do it until I got all my numbers together, which I just basically got in the last few days. Okay. So. I think um, we really didn't discuss anything as far as that um, letter from the Events Committee. Events Committee. It, um, <coughs> I uh, well, thought there should be some discussion on that. But, uh, Wouldn't that set a precedent if we did something like that? Did we really have to get the money to the Wonder Debt Committee? Or, no, 
I, I, I just to start out with, uh, basically we've always given money to the lumber jack for lighting, I guess, or something, was not it? Mm -hmm. It has to be specified, which we always supported lighting. Mm -hmm. and, um, we do not have anything budgeted. In fact, uh, last year we went over that uh, in our budget. Uh, this year we've already spent the money that comes out of there also for like a retirement for like Wall's retirement. Mm -hmm. um,
That is a week from tomorrow. Yeah. 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 I'm not going to promise you nothing until I find out what's happening with the roads and tomorrow. But I will try to make it happen. Okay, and I'll keep in touch with me and if it works out, I'll come out with you. Okay. Yeah, I guess I'll use it. Okay. Yeah, I'll use it. Do what you do. And that's really. Well, it's very here, sir. That's really all I can do. Um, we're going to have to come into the second session. Mm -hmm. Yes, I the motion that we go into a second session. Now, did you have that down to me?